Olco, the high watermark of quality. Yeah, the motor's about 80 pounds. Versus 80 pounds versus close to 1,000 pounds for this same horsepower. This motor here uh, runs about 90, about 80, 80, 89 percent efficient. This particular motor. The bigger ones are slightly more efficient. The controller is up in here, and uh, so we're in this boat here. You have that big wheel, the control, the drum controller, and all. This is all done electronically. We have. Uh, some other gear from here, disconnect for the batteries and things of that nature. And this is all sealed, so you could you could uh, hit it with a hose. IP65 means uh, you could is a code IP things for how waterproof you are. This is not submersible, you, and then it might survive submerged for a while. We don't weight it that way, and we don't say it's waterproof. But you could you could you could hit this with a hose, up water on it. This plug right here would be the one that would be in question. It's not a waterproof plug. This is a waterproof plug. And the whole top is gasketed, but uh, it's a giant step toward making a, a unit that can survive in a storm with both and being phosphorus. It's a lot more weatherproof than a gas or diesel motor, at least. Yeah. Are, are a lot more waterproof, oh, yeah. you know, weatherproof than a gas or a diesel. Just because oh, yeah. there's so many other <laughs> parts that we could get wet. Oh, yeah. Sure, a diesel engine or a gas engine, you dump water on them, you're not going to keep running. Uh, the way this works is, is the, this unit takes uh, uh, the battery voltage, and uh, of course you've got an electronic uh, dashboard up there, and it turns it into three-phase uh, AC power. And uh, it, it, it changes direction and speed by, uh, by changing the frequency of the power, because normal power in a home is 60 cycles per second, and the voltage is fixed. So here, uh, you, to uh, change the speed of the motor, we change the cycles per second going to the motor and the <coughs> voltage to match. They call it volts per cycle. So if you run it at a full speed, you, your, your uh, uh, frequency is up there, 60 hertz and full voltage. You take it down to half speed, you cut the frequency in half and the voltage in half simultaneously. And uh, and this is doing, in, in household current, normally just a single phase. You plug your toaster in. This is actually three phase, and it's sort of like a three cylinder motor versus a one cylinder motor. You know, one cylinder motor has less power, it chugs along and such. But it, it's, it's actually doing, it's like a three-cylinder engine firing three times for every revolution. So it makes it very smooth. And, and uh, it has the ability, even at that speed, to deliver full torque. So if you're running through uh, <clears throat> a mud bank or something like that, other than a rock, of course, if a rock's going to stop it, anything that weeds and things, it'll keep going at that speed. And, uh, and then it gets overloaded right here. See the RPM board. It shows the answer is almost here because there's no load on it. It's not in the, in the water. But if we'd be normally running here, and all of a sudden you see this going up, it means you're running the boat through something other than water, you know, the half water, half blood, or something. This gives the, uh, the charge time, the charge of the battery, and how much time you have uh, to run. In other words, it, it, Things they have here are similar to a car. You want to know what's going on. You want to have indications and safeties and warning lights. Uh, <coughs> this has a uh, some kind of a fault. I think there's a 47 faults in the list, something like that. In a light, uh, we'll get two different <coughs> panels, but it comes up with a, a fault indication where the whole screen will go blank, and then it'll give you a text saying what the fault is. But you look, it gives you a number, and you look in the owner's manual, it'll tell you that uh, you got to charge the batteries, or you, uh, whatever, whatever the case may be. Or for instance, if you have it off, and somebody comes along and puts a throttle, and you turn it on, uh, it's not going to run. And if you leave it there, then a fault signal will uh, come up on here, you know, telling you that, well, there it is. Uh, it tells you that uh, it says dummy, 
You gotta put it neutral. <laughs> Something like that. So you put it neutral, turn it off, and turn it back on again, and you're off and running. So that, that's some of the stuff you can do with electronics that they, you know, it's 100 years later, 112 years later, 13 years. So uh, we're going for efficiency, reliability, uh, convenience. Anybody can operate it. Uh, and I have to tell the story, Steve's heard it a number of times, but we were in a show, and uh, women get the advantage of this on sailboats before the husbands, I have to say, because typically the guy's up at the helm, he's being a hero, braving the, the wind and the sun and everything else, well, the missus is downstairs making the sandwiches with all the noise and of the diesel engine, the smell, and all that stuff. And so I'm sitting on the back of a 27-footer, his husband and wife come up there, and, and they're talking. Finally, they say, he, I, I said, boy, are you interested in one of these? He said, I've got a hunter, and the engine's good for another year or two. He said, it's dying, but it's good for another year or two. And uh, as soon as he goes back, I'm going to buy one of these. He said, it's really great. So if you're getting off the boat, the wife leans over, and she says, well, will sugar in the oil do it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she go, he goes, what? You know? <laughs> So, but true, a true story. So the women seem to get it, you know, hey, this is really a good thing. And, and not only that, if you put it in a boat, I mean, you could do it here, but let's say a typical sailboat has a gen set on board, uh, anything from about 30 feet and up. And, and you got a bat and you're running a batteries, now you want to run continuously. You can set it up so that you just turn your gen set on. And then you're, you're charging through your charges, you can eat, have the charges ready to extend your range or run full throttle all day long, as long as you have fuel on board. So you really have a true hybrid that's best of both worlds. You can run a strictly off battery, charging from shore or charging from the solar and wind don't have as much oomph for charging. It takes longer to charge than shore power. But nevertheless, if you were a weekend sailor out of Long Island or something like that, you could have a photovoltaics or a wind generator and you do so little power going out sailing those guys because they just want to get out where the wind is. And you'd be off the grid all summer long, never have to plug it in, be out of the mooring. And so that, that's another advantage. No fuel on board. Uh, some places out in California, for instance, they, they're getting so strict on, on water contamination that they're finding that some of the older sailboats with diesels on them, the fuel is leaking through the hull and they're getting they're getting some contamination of the water, so they're going around and they're probing. They have you start your engine, they stick the thing up your tailpipe. So going electric, you get rid of all of that, you know? Plus you're being green, so. And I think a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the, all the Navy ships, all the cruise ships, for efficiency, they all have electric motors to the prop. They have big diesels that run generators, but they're not running the diesel to run the propeller because the efficiency rate is so much better. In the 136, we can get with the generator running um, for continuous running, you can get closer to 30 miles to the gallon if you want to go all the way up the intercoastal waterway, where if you ran your Yanmar diesel to the prop, you might get six miles to the gallon. So it's a much more efficient way. It's a much easier motor to service, a diesel gen set. It's easy, usually it's a much easier access to get it out of the boat, where most sailboats, the drive motor is buried under the companion way. You've got to take everything apart, take part of the motor apart, and to get it out to service. Also, we eliminate a transmission. So when you're docking, you have full speed forward, full speed reverse, so you can walk the stern over and be able to dock much easier. There the are Q a lot of advantages. QE2 started out as a steam turbine right. being powered. And after uh, running it for a few years, I said, this is crazy. We're using more power for air conditioning, for cooking lights, and all the other accessories. He said, what, what are we doing? So they, they convert it to electric. So the QE2 is electric, and all the new cruise ships are electric. The diesel electric, just like Peter's saying. So, because you can run, let's say you have a big cruise ship, and you have different loads at different times of the day. <coughs> so let's say you have uh, eight or 10 gen sets down below, big generators. And, uh, and part of the day, you may only re require two to be running, to be have the, be running the ship, traveling. Other times you might have to have five. So you, you're just putting the amount of gen generators online that you need, and they're running at their peak efficiency. Go. The high watermark of quality.